<laughs> We're going to talk about fish and um, the great logic about fish. This one I've just done and I've just taken out of the oven. I don't know whether you guys can see this. It's come out of the oven a couple of minutes ago. And uh, the great thing about fish is that a matter of 30 seconds one way or another is going to be the difference between having a raw fish that's sticking to the bone or one that's, one that's overdone. Um, so the way that I cook fish is I clean it of its gills, of its guts, of any kind of black imperfection that could be uh, at all bitter. And I leave the scales on and I totally undersalt. There's almost no salt on this whatsoever. And you roast it standing up on stalks, in this case, of wild fennel, of parsley stalks, of bolting sprigs of tarragon, of whatever one has at hand or, um, and can find. I mean, if you can't find anything, you can just do it standing in a pan on its own in some greaseproof paper or something like that. The way to tell that a fish is absolutely perfectly done is if it just releases from the bone. Now you want to take a fish, and this is almost releasing from the bone, and as I'm undressing it, what happens is a fish is going to it's going to go into a very hot oven. It's going to build up a momentum of temperature that's going to get it cooking. The fact that the scales are still on the fish is going to make like a cocotte. It's going to make a, an envelope within the oven. So it's going to sort of steam bake in itself with a very little bit of steam being aromatized by the herbs underneath it. So when this comes out of the oven, it's going to continue cooking. So oftentimes what people do is they'll read a recipe, they'll roast the fish, it will say so many minutes per kilo, they'll take it out and be perfect. By the time they come to it, because the phone's rang or they've gone over there or the mayonnaise is split or whatever they've done, it's overcooked. So you want to take things out undercooked and let them rest to perfection. Here we've got the before. So this is a beautiful sea bass that's just come out of from Lou yesterday. So you want to take all these guys off, all these sharp chaps, Otherwise, you can do yourself such damage, it's untrue. You can tell obvious things. You can tell fish is fresh by the perkiness of the eyes, the, cl the clarity of the eyes, the color of the gills. This is a beautiful gill, gill color here. You want a vibrant color coming out through here. So, take your herbs, scrunch them up, and what we're going to do is we're going to come up through the fish's mouth. In he goes. Now we're going to be really, really careful with salt because um, any salt that you base something with is going to end up in the bottom of the pan. And what that, pretty obvious, but what, what it means is when you come to taking out the finished fish like we've done here, you lose all the joy that you can have in the bottom of the pan because all your juices will be over salted. Simple as that. This goes in. So I very much like to eat fruit at the beginning of a meal, or to use it as a, uh, as a savoury vegetable garnish, although it's a savoury fruit garnish, or a frissonne. Uh, so um, what I'd like to have you taste is an example of that um, fruit garnish. White peaches, which come from southwest France, from where I live, which were picked on Tuesday afternoon out of the afternoon sun, um, of a very hot day, and which have... Um, sort of perfect right now. Now, fruit, I like to season. So here I'm seasoning with a little fleur de sel, flour of salt, olive oil, plain olive oil. And here, what I'm gonna give you what I'm going to give you is I'm going to give you a tomato. A tomato that I've, that I've taken the skin off. And I don't know, the non-dressed tomato just gives a completely different texture and gives you a lot of the taste of a tomato um, is in the, 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 the compounds just under the skin. So you're going to get that tint, that acidity, which is going to hit your tongue. And um, you're also going to get that traveling texture. Food is a sensorial journey rather than an intellectual one. So. Um, it's the imagination and the palate. There are no rules. I think uh, recipes are probably oftentimes rather um, restrictive. People uh, sort of delegate 
they delegate the logic of a recipe. It's a bit like going to the doctor or the dentist. You put it into his hands. You know, the, the cake didn't work. You know, it's, it's, the, it's the recipe's fault. It's not. You didn't use your brain. You I mean why did you, you didn't taste? You, your imagination wasn't alive. You weren't. You weren't trying to um, create something that you had a sensorial vision of. All right. So look at this guy. That's our 14 minutes. Okay, so how do we know? <coughs> Up you come. Okay, so what you want to do is you just want to put a knife down the back here, down the back of the spine. And that's the trick to know what's going on. This is still just holding. This is probably a good time to take it out of the oven because this is certainly not stopped cooking yet. This is piping hot, it's nearly done. It doesn't need to be in there at 200 for another three minutes, but it's probably quite happy to be here for, you know, another four or five minutes like this, still dressed. Um, if you make a mess of it and you check too early and you're left with some gaping awkward hole here, the way to go around that, or a way to go around that, is to take a bit of the vegetable you've got, like a carrot or a courgette or whatever it is, and just gently fill that hole so that the steam's not escaping, so you're not getting a bit that's drying out and going through the cum. So like this, all you've got to do is just pick it up. You know, and you can bring this to table. You can, you can, if there's three or four of you, or five or six or whatever, you can bring a fish to this, like, when you haven't, all you've done is you made it so simple for yourself, it's untrue. Bring it, you, you, you bring it to table, you undress it, you serve it, and you just eat it like that. There's no doubt what you're doing, you're eating a fish, you know, you can see the fish before you. It's beautiful. Now, I think we'll work with just plain olive oil with this, which is, yeah. Give a little bit of colour to this. And taste. There's enough to taste. There should be enough to taste, I think. And I'd like to take a